What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about the shadow ban system in Call of Duty, because it appears there was a pretty big wave of shadow bans that just hit the community, and I've been seeing this from a lot of different people in the community, not only content creators, also just average everyday gamers out there. And while I've never been shadow banned myself, I do feel like this is an issue that's worth discussing because I feel the shadow ban system has become essentially redundant, and it's also far too easy to exploit. So first up, let's cover exactly what a shadow ban is and how it differs from an actual ban in the game. So when it comes to an actual ban in the game, you will be kicked out of the game entirely, and when you try to connect back to the servers, it will come up with a message saying that your account has been banned. With shadow bans, on the other hand, there's no message, there's no indicator, there's nothing that tells you that you've been shadow banned. However, if you are shadow banned, you'll likely notice extremely long matchmaking times, and it's very likely you'll never be able to get a ping less than like 200 milliseconds. No matter where you are in the world, you're gonna have an extremely high ping. Additionally, if you're shadow banned, it's very likely that once you eventually do get into a match with a really high ping, you're gonna notice a lot of actual cheaters in your games, and all of those combined is a clear sign that you have been shadow banned in the game. You're still technically able to play the game, but it's effectively unplayable at that point. And if this has happened to you, this means your account is under review. And assuming you weren't actually cheating, your account should be returned back to normal within about one to two weeks is what I've noticed with people. And when it comes to the shadow ban system, it actually predates Ricochet Anti-Cheat. And it works separately from Ricochet Anti-Cheat, as far as we're aware, of course. And as far as anybody's been able to determine, these shadow bans will typically result from being reported by a bunch of different people. So like in a kill cam, for instance, you can select to report a player and then you can choose which one of the options to report them for. If your account receives a certain threshold of these reports, it appears that will trigger a shadow ban, put your account under review without fully banning you from the game. And during that time, the game is essentially unplayable to you. Technically playable, but essentially unplayable. Now, before we had the Ricochet anti-cheat, this was basically the anti-cheat in the game. So it really relied on the community to be reporting people that looked suspicious. Then those accounts would go under review. And then if it was determined that that account was actually cheating, they'd be banned. And if they were deemed innocent, then they would be unshadow banned and they'd be back to normal. In theory, a system like this seems totally fine and it makes sense. If a bunch of different people are reporting somebody, then it seems likely that something suspicious is going on with that player. They're doing something suspicious in the game. And with enough of these reports, I think it kind of makes sense to get rid of those suspicious accounts in regular matchmaking. So then if they are cheating, other players don't have to deal with that until eventually their account gets reviewed and then they get banned. But unfortunately, this system relies on people reporting honestly, so reporting people because they genuinely feel that person is cheating, and not just because they didn't like how that player was playing in the game, or maybe they recognize a content creator and they don't like that content creator, so they're just gonna report them because they don't like them. And then there's another factor involved. It also requires people to have a basic understanding of game mechanics and also what's possible in the game. Over the years, I've seen so many accusations of cheating where when you watch the video clip, it's so easily explained like the person doesn't know how a minimap works and there was clearly a person on the minimap, so it's obvious that's how the person knew they were there. Or there's still a ton of people that have no idea that kill cams are not a recording in real time of what that other player actually saw on their screen. And instead, it's a simulation of events based on limited snapshots of data that have been received by the host. And to my knowledge, it doesn't even account for any sort of lag compensation or anything. So this can often make things look really funky and not exactly what that enemy player saw. So many times you'll see a sniper shoot the air next to you in a kill cam, but in real time, they were actually on target. Or the recoil that the player is experiencing might look totally different in a kill cam compared to what they actually saw on their screen in real time. And then there's another factor that's become quite common recently, and this is a large group of people that can't comprehend that some players are actually just that good. Sometimes it's just a case of somebody that's been playing this game eight hours a day for two or three years, so of course their aim and their movement and their map knowledge and their game knowledge is genuinely just on a completely different level from the average player that you would run into. And in saying that, I already know a bunch of people are going to be claiming that I'm defending cheaters. I'm not talking about actual cheaters, and I do feel every situation needs to be handled on a case-by-case -case basis. There's absolutely a lot of cheating going on in Call of Duty. It's just that sometimes the player really is that good at the game.
But my point is, when you put both of those factors together, people either not reporting honestly or not understanding how the game works and thinking somebody's cheating when there's a perfectly reasonable explanation for what's going on, then you can really start to see how flawed this shadow ban system can be and how it's quite easy for false positives to happen where innocent players end up getting shadow banned and they're essentially unable to play the game for a week or two. Now, before the Ricochet anti-cheat was in place, I would say this system was at least better than nothing, even though it sucks if there's a false positive and an innocent player is unable to play the game for a couple weeks. At least it was also quite effective at getting actual cheaters out of regular lobbies, because if you do see an obvious aimbot, most people are reporting that, and therefore that player should be getting shadow banned fairly quickly. But with how many false positives are possible and with how easily this system can be exploited and weaponized against people, I feel it's become completely redundant now that we have an actual anti-cheat system in place with Ricochet. Even though it's obviously not a perfect system that catches every single cheater in the game, it's at least far better than the shadow ban system ever was. And with the frequency of false positives that have been popping up, I do feel it's time to either get rid of the shadow ban system or at least rework it in some sort of meaningful way that will limit the amount of false positives, limit the exploitability, and perhaps expedite the review process if there's any technical way possible to do that. And that's kind of where this video runs its course. Unfortunately, I don't have the technical knowledge. I don't have the deep understanding of how this system works in the first place. So I don't necessarily have a good solution to this. I more so just wanted to shed some light on an obvious problem with the system. And hopefully the developers will be able to find some solutions to this issue. And with that, this is where I want to hear your thoughts about this in the comments down below. What do you guys think about the current state of the shadow ban system combined with ricochet anti-cheats in Call of Duty? Do you feel shadow bans have become redundant and should be eliminated? Do you think it should just be reworked in some way so our reports still matter and mean something? Or do you think it's totally fine as is and it's okay that a bunch of innocent players are essentially unable to play the game for a week or two? Just let me know down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.